all right friends welcome to the third chapter and in this chapter we're going to cover retailing in electronic commerce products and services okay this is a fairly long chapter and I'm going to start with this bit and then once I'm done with this bit I am going to go back to put your learning into practice and add how I can make my retail store the service retail store that I have and scrumptious indulgence more appealing and as per the concepts covered in this course and then I'm going to continue for further for chapter number three okay the learning objectives of this chapter look nice they are describe electronic retailing or e-tailing and its characteristics classify the primary e-tailing business models okay describe how online travel and tourism services operate and their impact on the industry okay this is interesting because I just made a booking at booking.com and I'm going to show you how my booking changed okay for my vacation plans I'll show you the kind of impact these travel websites have on our daily plans for you know any kind of vacation or any kind of business plans discuss the online employment market including its participants benefits and limitations I am also going to show you another website that hires freelancers and how people are able to work from home by making every transaction electronic or online describe online real estate services discuss online stock trading services okay discuss cyber banking and online personal finance I'm going to show this to you as well describe on demand delivery of groceries and similar perishable products and services related to them okay what are we doing we are talking about the different sectors covered by e-commerce how life has suddenly become very easy because of electronic commerce you do have to appreciate that in this dig digital age every kind of transaction is possible online you really don't need to travel to a lot of places to get things done now okay except for things that require physical presence or some kind of you know um, valid authentication you really can do a lot of things online nowadays and you have these things called digital signatures things have changed a lot okay and spe especially with the cyber crime police and many other uh, control officials that are watching you what you're doing watching your digital foot footprint things have become even more easier to conduct or online and to and it's easier to earn the trust and faith of people in the online environment discuss various online consumer aids okay describe the delivery of digital products and online entertainment discuss various online consumer aids including comparison shopping aids describe disintermediation and other b2c strategic issues disintermediation and reintermediation are very important concepts okay i'm going to go ahead and highlight this because i want to be able to cover this in detail and you should be able to understand this in detail as well okay all right all right internet marketing and b2c electronic retailing electronic retailing or e-tailing is retailing conducted online over the internet e-tailers are retailers who sell over the internet size and growth of the b2c market okay what sells well on the internet what sells well on the internet and developments in e-commerce okay so we're going to discuss these and also characteristics and advantages of successful e-tailing and advantages of e-tailing all right so these are the mini topics that we're going to cover in this lecture but before i go to the mini topics i want to show this to you e-tailing as an enterprise electronic commerce system okay if I have a company for example scrumptious indulgence okay and you know what okay sure let's use this example if you can also use the example of a big company like you know Verizon Microsoft 
Accenture, any big companies out there, you can use their examples. So, but they have to be able to sell their products online. Okay. The e-tailer enterprise, finance, accounting, human resource management, and IT. So this is in the center. On the right side, I see B2C sales, marketing and customer resource management. Okay. So this is customer, supplier, 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 business partner. So these are your business to consumer sales. Then you have business to business and supply chain management. Okay. This is SCM, supply chain management. You have business partner, supplier, 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 and business partner here as well. So these are the people that you buy from. These are the people you sell to. So enterprise resource planning or the is the backbone. And enterprise resource planning is also available in the form of a strategic decision making process. It's a process as well as a tool, a product or a tool which helps businesses to uh, put together all their requirements from the other B2B services and their needs from the customer market. And they're able to create some kind of a some kind of an interface through which the back-end users they're able to make changes necessary so that these two areas are able to function uh, efficiently and smoothly so enterprise resource planning or the backbone is all about internal operations okay the objective is to facilitate integration of internal operations and increase productivity okay so software tools like ERP and other tools like these, they help you plan your B2B and B2C activities better. The B2C side is the sell side, is the sell side of a business and B2B side is the buy side of the business. In the sell side of the business, you have customer facing applications. Okay, this is one portal. This is another portal and this is the third portal, which is the ERP portal, which belongs to the company. It is the intranet where only the employees have the privilege to access different pages of the same website. Here, only the customers can see this page. Okay. B2C and customer facing applications objective, optimize business relationships with customers, increase service, effectiveness and sales. So how are you going to create this page so that the customers are happy, they trust you, they are able to engage with you, you are able to provide feedback, you are able to provide support and it's like a very transparent, very, you know, friendly relationship. How and then sub facing supplier, distributor, business partner, this kind of portal, this portal here is different. Okay, and it will be used to optimize relationships with business partners and reduce cost of goods sold. Okay, so this is the buy side. And for example, if you need raw material to run your business, for example, the scrumptious indulgence business, I need raw material to run my business. I need buttercream, I need flour, I need sugar, I need food color, I need my baking tools, I need my perishable baking supplies. All of these I will contact with a baking supplies uh, providing company. Exactly, isn't it? So, and I will contact two or three different ones and I will try to strike a deal with them. Then I'm going to only go with you and no one else. Uh, every six months, please make sure that the, all the orders that are placed on the site here, they are fulfilled by you. Okay, so this is my buy side. My, I may have raw materials. I may have materials to run my office. For example, air conditioning, electricity, water and rent of the house the real estate I, I i need to be in touch with many many businesses okay now my it's a cake delivery business i would definitely need to have a contract with a cake transportation company if available if not then i have to do this myself okay and for that i might need a card okay I might be I might go for a rental car or I would buy a company car with the banner with the logo with my logo and my banner on you know displayed across the car so these are the kind of services that I'm looking for when I go for B2B uh, services and 
this part by side of my website is very different from my sell side. My customers do not need to know what I'm doing on the sub buy side and the buy side people can see my customers. Customer site is like, you know, open to all. Anybody could be my customer. Even my employees can be my customers. But this site is very private, the buy side, because I don't want to share this information with everybody. So this is very highly password restricted. Okay. And what's happening in the middle is our own very private in-house decisions. This itself, this site here, the ERP or the backbone of my website is also very, very private. I'm not going to talk about this with the customers or the other B2B people or my partners. Okay. If you get this e-tailing and, and, uh, as an enterprise electronic commerce system, clearly, if you understand this well, you should be able to identify all the role players or stockholders of your company. You should be able to identify your needs, the needs of uh, another business that you will be, you know, buying from and the needs of the customer. E-tailing business models, classifications of models by distribution channel, direct marketing by mail order retailers that go online, direct marketing by manufacturers, pure play e-tailers, click and motor retailers, okay, and internet or online malls. So we have, and then there's one more, direct marketing, broadly marketing that takes place without intermediaries between manufacturers and buyers in the context of this book marketing done online between any seller and buyer and direct marketing is what we accomplished in our put your learning into practice chapter two what i did with scrumptious indulgence was a very classic example of direct buying okay now revenue models or e-tailing business models are not different from each other we are just taking the revenue models and describing them more detail in this chapter i don't want you to get confused so which ones am i going to be explaining these are the ones that i need to explain more direct marketing by mail order retailers that go online okay uh these are something like this okay here is the local retail store that i have and i'm a member of this store let me take this a little bit up yes marker vip yes so this store has we it's it has materials or services and products available for women men kids home electronics shoes beauty brand sales what i'm trying to explain here is that direct marketing by mail order retailers that go online this is exactly what they're doing they send me emails i'm a member they send me emails and they tell me that you know a certain thing is on a sale or if it's not on a sale or you know there's a deal going on whatever they show me and these are the things that I've recently viewed okay so they just show me these things and they tell me that you know you you can purchase and sometimes you know those emails are very fruitful I'm like okay I was waiting for this and I'm going to go back and I'm going to buy something for them so it's like a direct marketing going on through emailing or mail order direct marketing by manufacturers okay this what are we have we have here is a central point of all brands here you see all brand names here okay all of these brand names the countless brand names that continue to work with us okay again i'm going to take this opportunity to direct your attention here check this out marker marker vip team we would like to let you know that our working hours are from 9 a.m to 6 p.m okay and if i want to send a message somebody would be available for me now this is something that you want to create in your website this is something very high in demand for example if someone's visiting the website they want to know more they can always have a chat with anybody a live representative of the website so this is one of the things okay let me close that so what i was trying to say here is the direct marketing through the retailers and then direct marketing through manufacturers when manufacturers start selling you stuff it is much cheaper why because there is no intermediary involved okay first you have the manufacturer and then you have the retailer and then you have the customer so when you remove the retailer between from between the customer and the manufacturer 
you save more money as a customer and the manufacturer also you know benefits from higher volume of sales okay the manufacturer doesn't necessarily save money but they get more volume of sales very good example is the wholesale uh, market wholesale market called costco.com if you go and take a look at costco.com you will be able to see that you know they sell a lot of stuff directly from the manufacturers okay pure play or retailers these are purely retail stores you do not find their live shops at all click and motor retailers these are shops that have partial uh, you know uh, stuff available online and partial stuff available uh, and mo all the stuff available in the real store it's a business multi-channel business model this click and motor motor it's a business model where a company sells in multiple marketing channels simultaneously for example both physical and online stores okay and then you have internet or online malls markup vip is one of them it's a similar example then the other one is the this one the click and motor let me go back to this page here quickly show you a site called uh, i want to show you a site that has an online as well as um physical presence i'll show the costco costco.com okay and i want to show you the one located in the united states okay this store costco wholesale is available as warehouse okay find a warehouse it is available everywhere okay and they do a lot of selling they have a gas station they have tire center they have food court they have hearing aids optical pharmacy and business center okay and these people they sell a lot of things a lot of things at a much lower cost because it's like a manufacturer selling them now you can buy stuff here okay you can buy stuff here or you can buy through the location itself okay so you can buy easily through a warehouse you just locate a warehouse and you go there or you can buy online so this is called as a click and motor organization with this i'm going to stop the lecture and i'm going to continue chapter three in my second module take care